I always wanted a mammoth steam locomotive to run on rails when I was a kid. And I could never afford one. You never save up enough money. Well, I think we put that to rights. childhood version of me would be most pleased right now <laughs> and don't forget as well this video today comes in association with our sponsor Trainomatic makers of DCC decoders and accessories <laughs> Welcome back to another video here with me, Jenny Kirk. And now that picture on the fireplace, Eden Valley Standard, a John Wigston original, means that we're in a different venue today. This is the library. And uh, you might remember this from a few other videos that we've done in the past. Uh, I think some of the Jenny Monday Club used to come from here in days gone by. But we're not here for the books or the paintings. Or indeed, we're not even here for the log burning fire, such as the nice weather that we've been having. And that nice weather brings us back to the mammoth that you saw last week. And today, with the aid of a few bits and pieces, I'm going to do a little bit of cursory maintenance and light restoration on this model. And let's see if we can get it running. So come along with me for the ride. We're going to take a look at this model and see what we can do to bring her back to working standard. It's going to be great. Come along with me. It'll be great to have you company. As you can see laid out in front, we've got a small syringe with a finer needle on it. This is from uh, one of the uh, accessory suppliers that I've been using of late. I can't actually remember off the top of my head which one, but they're, they're actually fairly standard syringes. You can even get them uh, through medical supplies, so that might be a bit tight uh, at the moment. We've also got some of the steam oil that came with the locomotive. Now steam oil is important for any steam engine because it needs lubrication. But uh, you don't want to use just regular oil because oil, uh, regular oil just emulsifies with water. It makes the right mess and compromises the lubricity. Now there's a great word, isn't it? So steam oil doesn't do that. It's specially formulated for um, being fairly resistant to steam and water. So there's a little bottle of that that came with it, and I'm going to be using some of that. And then we've got the uh, filler uh, nozzle uh, funnel thing there. I'm going to be using that to fill it up, but I want to get rid of some of that scale. So what I've actually ended up with is this uh, malt vinegar out of the cupboard. Now, you're going to be screaming at your screens going, no, use white spirit vinegar. Yeah, I would love to, but unfortunately, we're right in the middle of the coronavirus lockdown. So I have tried to find white spirit vinegar and it is just impossible to find. In fact, actually malt vinegar also has been impossible to find. We also live here in a soft water area. Uh, this model has obviously spent a lifetime in a hard water area. Um, but what it means being in a soft water area is that, quite frankly, you just cannot get any lime scale remover around here because there's no demand for it. Our kettles don't get furry, our dishwashers don't uh, build up scale, neither do our bathrooms. So actually getting hold of a product specifically for removing scale is quite tricky. Uh, now, uh, the scale itself, we'll probably be able to remove that with an acid and hence the vinegar. Vinegar, as those of you who remember from high school uh, chemistry, is ethanoic acid. Of course, malt vinegar has a few other bits and pieces, and we're going to overlook that for the purposes of this. Um, but we don't want a heavy duty acid, something like sulfuric or hydrochloric acid, because they'd also react with the metal. Uh, of course, uh, uh, acid plus metal will give you hydrogen gas, and then also uh, you'd, you'd get the salt. Um, now, I think it's magnesium carbonate, perhaps, is what the actual scale deposits are. Uh, but uh, I'm going to try giving it a wash out with vinegar. And it's probably going to smell a bit funky the first time we run it, but it's just to try and loosen and clean up some of that scale. We're not really going to get rid of all of it, 
I'm going to have a good go. So um, I'm going to uh, fill it up with a little bit of that vinegar and some boiling water just to activate it. It's going to be a messy job, so I'm going to do this outside. Well, we're out here in the garden. The wind has just got straight up. This is always the way when you come out with a camera. But we're going to press on, and I've got the mamod, and I've got the vinegar. Uh, if you can get white spirit vinegar, that's even better. But I've just got to make do with what we've got because of uh, the shortages and the difficulties of getting hold of so many different things. And what I'm going to do is uh, making use of the little funnel. This actually does come with it. And I'm just going to um, fill her up. Not completely, just enough. If the wind will let me do this to get some of this into the boiler. Uh, this is, of course, ethanoic acid with some other stuff in to make it malted vinegar. And it's quite a weak acid, so it's not going to attack the metal. Uh, let's just put this to one side. Put the safety valve back in so it doesn't all leak back out when I turn it upside down. And then uh, I can now feel there's a load there in the boiler. So just trying to get it to react with that scale. Now with these, we can take the back off. We're going to do that. And I don't know whether it will be visible in the shadow. But I can already see that some of that scale and horrible muck has come away from the sight glass at the back. And it means I can actually see the level inside. So that should hopefully have taken care of a lot of what's going on inside. Let's just take that out as well. So I'm going to turn this over and this is the bit where we just have to be careful not to, I'm just trying to find a way of letting it dump its uh, vinegar without spraying it everywhere and you'll see there it starts to come out of the funnel so we manually just wind this over and that's going to clean out the pipework, the cylinders, piston heads I'm just going to work it through. It doesn't take too long, and that should also take out with it all of the gunk and horrible scale that's uh, inside. And I can already feel that this is the motion is turning over a lot freer and easier than it was before. As you can see there, just with the back pressure, it's it's working really nicely. So I think we've about got all of that vinegar out. Now we've done the boiler wash out, which is probably the biggest part of this, I want to do the lubrication. We don't need the syringe because it turns out that the bottle has a very tiny nozzle on the end. It, it's a, quite a peculiar bottle. It seems to have been sealed with the oil inside, but it, it is working. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to get this on its side and I'm going to start lubricating up all of the bits and actually I can use that needle on this just to make sure that the oil goes where it needs to and this this model has been in storage quite probably for a very very long time so let's just see now lubricating the cylinder is actually really tricky just keep it moving and get some on there and that should hopefully just work everything in so I'm going to turn it around the other way now and again repeat use the needle just to make sure that the oil works in same back here And uh, just try and work oil in underneath all the shaft. Let's try and get that to do its special thing. And I can already feel again, that feels so much smoother. And there's not much to these, so that should be enough.
So that's all done. We've done the most important thing, which is the boiler washout to get rid of all of that crud that was in there. Once we've done that, we moved on to lubrication. It's important to do. It's probably not been lubricated in 20, 30 years, something like that. So everything was really dry. I've used the steam oil that came with it because uh, that won't emulsify with the water. So the only thing now left to do is to fill her up put a couple of solid fuel tablets in it and see if she'll actually run. I'm going to pull the whistle down. The reason for this is just to let some of the air out and start the process of filling her up. Now I'm going to keep an eye on the water gauge in the cab as well. I've taken the cab back off for doing this just so I can really see nicely. And actually when I have this running around in the garden, I'm going to leave the cab back off as well, just so I can really keep an eye on it. That's about full, so I'm happy at that. I'm going to take that out. And then I can already feel, actually, it's quite warm. Finger tight. Can already feel the heat building up. So I've already got one solid fuel tablet snapped in two, placed into the tray. Let's go out, let's light her up and see if she will run. So I'm going to try and light this and as you can probably tell the wind has really got up so this could prove just a little bit interesting. So brief lull in the wind. Well, there isn't. I'm not just worried, feeling that it blew out. We've been thwarted by the weather. It's just too windy. Um, the only other thing I can think of doing is actually opening the roof hatch in the conservatory and then support this front and back on a piece of wood. And at least then we can see if we can get it just to run. Well, it didn't really work out yesterday. The big problem was the wind. Every time I carried the locomotive out with the uh, firebox lit, the wind just literally blew it out. We were hoping that today it would be a little bit calmer, but it, it's actually worse out there. So plan B, we're going to try running it here in the kitchen, so we're on a tiled floor, we don't have to worry too much about anything it spits out, and we're just going to rough test the loco and make sure that it actually will work. So, I'm just going to try and fill that out. Uh, these are the tablets that uh, kept blowing out, which is why they look a funny colour. Um, we have opened a window. I think what doesn't help is that these are old tablets. These have been in storage for an awfully long time. So, I've got them lit. And now we wait. Not sure how long it's going to take to boil that up. I'm going to leave the back off the cab. And um, let's just see how it goes. Um, there's actually quite a, a lot of warmth coming out of it. Um, I'm guessing it'll take a few minutes to start to get that on the boil. If we need to, we might have to go to a second set of tablets. But really, all we're looking to do at this point is see if the boiler washout and the cleaning out of all of that gunk and a full lubrication has done the trick and uh, see then if we've got a locomotive that we can then run in the garden when it's not quite so windy. So let's just test it out. We've got a lot of bubbling and there she goes. I think it's safe to say that it works. Whoa, there's a lot more power to it than I thought. I tried to slow it down a bit. It's actually really difficult to control. And just by moving the, um, basically the uh, cylinder cut off on the front. But I'm actually really, I'm, I'm, I'm hooked now. I think that is mission accomplished. So we've restored this. 
when the weather is a bit less windy, I am really looking forward to having this uh, go through its paces out in the garden. I can see the problem's going to be it getting too fast on the downhill. So we'll see how it goes, but certainly the restoration has worked. This is a Mamod SL1 steam tank locomotive that has been brought back to life. I'm really pleased. Today's video is sponsored by Trainomatic, makers of DCC decoders designed to be fully compatible with every manufacturer's locomotive. Visit train-o-matic.com to browse the full range and see what they've got suitable for you. I'd like to send out a huge thanks to everybody who supports me on Patreon. And an extra special huge thanks goes out to Anthony Kidson, Michael Churchwood, Anthony Hunt, William Wade, Wayne Johns, Offshore Allen, oorail.co.uk, Tepic, Michael Lockie, Helen Sink, Peter Bolton, Brian Smith, Brian and Dorothy Mudd, and Judge Mortis. Thank you. Without you guys, I couldn't do this.